y'all can can y'all see me around these trees hopefully you can all right we are in mr williams 2020 zl1 camaro uh, he had an unfortunate incident. The car came to us with the engine already broke. It, I believe it was a bone stock car. I don't know if the oil pump failed or what, but it came to us with the front cover already off of it and someone already diagnosed it with the, I don't think the oil paint was off of it as well. But we went ahead and put a brand new 416 cubic inch short block in it cleaned up the cylinder heads, put our complete cam kit in it. This is essentially our 800 horsepower, really like an 850 flex package, um, just with a built bottom end, being a 416 cubic inch. Uh, the supercharger still factory has not been ported. Uh, factory upper pulley, and we just went with a larger lower pulley like we do with our normal 800, 850 horsepower package. And we added the flex fuel sensor to it as well, so we can run 93 or E85. I don't know how long he's been without the car, but I have a feeling it's been sitting for a while just from looking inside of it here. So I'm sure he'll be happy that it's back on the road again, finally. All right, guys, we still do not have our old Instagram back, so please go follow our new Instagram. It is Late Model Racecraft HTX. It's been a struggle. I've been trying to get it back. 100,000 followers down the drain. So if you are watching this now, and which I know most of you do have Instagram, please go subscribe and follow our Instagram, Late Model Racecraft HTX. Thank you. And dyno numbers are comparable to what uh, we usually make with our 850 flex package. It was, uh, I wanna say 670 rear wheel horsepower on 93 octane and like 720 rear wheel horsepower on E85. Again, you gotta remember it's a 416 cubic inch motor. Doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna make more horsepower. All it does is it just gives us the strength that we need. Um, more cubic inches and more stroke does help with a little bit of torque. It did make a really good torque number, but the supercharger is the limiting factor on this thing. Um, but now that he has a built bottom end uh, with the E85 and the flex fuel system already on it, um, it's very easy to make the next step in more horsepower on this package. Um, literally, I, if it was mine, we either would do the race port for the supercharger, and this thing would be around 830, 850 rear wheel horsepower, um, or you go with the 2650 like we've been running a lot lately and make 850 on you know, pump gas and almost 1,000 rear wheel horsepower on E85. assuming it's been sitting for a while and that's why they put all these on it or maybe he puts a new one in every time he goes and drives the car I'm I'm not sure but I'm gonna try to make a little second and third gear pull I want to make sure the IATs look good um, on the dyno everything worked as it should but I just want to make sure there's no exhaust rattles um, like I always do the car had a came I don't even know the brand catback exhaust system, but I think it had a cat back on it. I think it did have a cold air when it first came to us. Uh, it is pretty loud with the headers and everything on the car. But let's see if I can do a quick little pull. Trash control on. He is on Toyo, so this thing should hook up pretty well. We are 
running E85 in the car, so our content is right at 81%. So I'm gonna pull over, check the log, make sure fuel system looks good, make sure the IATs look good, and we might try one more. If not, I'll just head back to the shop, get her detailed up, and uh, have this car shipped back to Mr. Williams. I don't even, I think he's in Texas. I'm not sure what part or where he's from, but it's filthy. You can tell this car's been sitting for a while, so we gotta get it cleaned up and get it back to him. Looking over the data, I just want to explain a little bit uh, for you guys out there. That some of you guys that do care about some of the technical stuff. Some of y'all don't care about it, but I'm going to share it anyways. Um, so because it's more cubic inches, 416 cubic inches versus factory, as well as the camshaft like we always do, the engine is now more efficient than factory. So we spin the supercharger, let's just call it 20% harder than factory. Well. If it's a stock engine, it'll make, I'm going to just throw rough numbers out there, 14 pounds of boost. With it being a 416 cubic inch engine, it's, the engine's larger, so it's more efficient. Same with the camshaft that's in it. So right now, we're literally only making a peak of like 9 pounds of boost um, because the engine is so efficient. Even with that boost level, that's how we are able to still make our 700 plus rear wheel horsepower just because the engine is so efficient. Um, if it was a stock cubic inch motor, we would see a couple more pounds of boost. Um, but some people don't really understand the why behind that, and they also think just because they have a 416 cubic inch motor, it's going to just make more horsepower. Um, yes, it does help. Like I said, the extra stroke does help with torque, but it's mainly about a durability issue. So no matter how big of cubic inches I have in this thing, whether I do a 427 or a 440 cubic inch motor, I'm still limited by that 1.7 liter supercharger that's sitting on top of it. So no matter how hard we spin that thing, um, it's still gonna make as much horsepower as that supercharger will uh, allow it to make. Um, but just wanted to give you all my notes there just because I'm looking at the, the file that I just made um, or that pull I just made. We did second, third, and fourth gear rip. Fuel system is great, so we are on straight E85. Alcohol content is 82%. Um, fuel pressure holds 80 on the low side across the board, the second gear, third, and fourth. And our rail pressure, which is on the mechanical side, so let's call it 3,000 PSI, um, it holds that across second, third, and fourth all the way up through the RPM range. Um, so the car is can run on 93 octane or E85, and this shows that it's very safe doing that with our air fuel ratio where we want it. Um, besides it, that was it. I just saw the boost numbers, and I'm like, man, I forgot when it was on the dyno how low of boost it made, and still made the numbers we got out of it. And that's just showing y'all how efficient the engine is. So I thought I'd share that with y'all real quick. But I'm gonna go. Uh, everything looks good, so I'm going to drive it back to the shop and get it cleaned up for Mr. Williams so he can come and pick this thing up. Like I said before, I think it's been sitting for quite a long time, and I know he's anxious to get it back. Hopefully, we'll get it cleaned up so we won't need any of these anymore. And we'll go from there. I hope you enjoyed this video. A uh, little bit of technical stuff in it with Mr. Williams ZL1 going from a 376 to a 416. Um, so Mr. Williams, obviously we've spoken to him. His next round of mods will obviously be upgrading the supercharger, getting rid of the small 1.7, going with a nice 2650. That way we can take full advantage of the larger cubic inches in our forged motor. So that engine at 15 pounds of boost or 18 pounds of boost will really wake up um, compared to that little 1.7 liter blower. We can take that little blower and spin it as hard as we want. Um, but again, at the end of the day, it will only make and flow so much air. So next in line for Mr. Williams, which I know he says six, nine months down the road, it might be three months down the road after he drives this thing and says, give me more. Um, but he'll be sending it back for the 2650 here soon. Um, and just also for you guys out there that do upgrade your engines, um, you can either port the factory supercharger to get more out of it, 
or obviously go with the larger supercharger. Hope you enjoyed this video, guys. As always, hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel. Click, uh, what is it, the bell notifications, I think, uh, for notifications for our next video. Till next time, guys.